Hello there folks. So today I'm going to show you an exciting new feature that Citra has implemented um, just a couple days ago. So first we'll go to their main website, that's citra-cmu.org. In this first new section here, you'll see Citra hardware shaders, hardware render updates. First things is cut to the chase, how fast is this? So what this does is this utilizes your GPU now instead of just like one core of your CPU, I believe is how it was doing it before. And that creates a major speed boost for most games, as long as you have a decent graphics card. As you can see in this example here before, um, this is what, either Pokemon, like Moon, Sun, Ultra Moon, Ultra Sun, one of those. Um, before it would run on most people's setups, not quite full speed. But now, after, as you can see from this little sample here, it runs very fast. They have the, um, there's no frame limiting set on here, so it's just going as fast as um, whoever did this at hardware can support. But you can limit that to 100% speed, and then it'll it'll run really well. Um, so I'm going to show you how to get all this set up here. Download. Um, you can do this option. I like to do the manual downloads since I do videos every now and then. I like to get the latest um, release build here and the canary builds, canary, whatever you want to call it. Um, I usually go with these. As it mentions up here, the nightly one contains the stuff that's already reviewed and is stable and good to go. Um, these builds down here, the canary, they um, have more experimental features added to them. So I always go with this. So get the latest one. You just choose your uh, platform here, hit Windows, you know, download a zip file, unzip that. You don't have to uh, install anything, just unzip it to a folder. If you're choosing, open it up, it's an exe file. I've already got mine open here. I've already, I've already set this thing up a little bit, but I'll go through every detailed setting that I did so that you know what will work out best for this emulator in those systems. So we'll go through each one of these file, load file, um, this right here, as you can see, the extensions it, it accepts. .3ds is going to be decrypted, as you can see in this super, this new Super Mario Bros. 2 uh, ROM file that I have here. It's the decrypted one. Um, it could be 3ds, 3d, sx, elf, aff, axf. That's cci, cxi, and that app. So these include like some homebrews and. Uh, See, it depends on the way you uh, you dump the cartridges. You can have them in different extensions, the CCI, CXI. I think those can also be like some eShop titles. So that's what file, what file does. Install CIA. Um, if you have like a custom firmware, Nintendo 3DS, you can also dump games and uh, I think eShops games and apps to CIA extension. And you can just install it on here and run it. I believe it, it'll just put them right here. Um, select game directory. Also, you can, uh, if you have all your um, 3DS and all your compatible um, ROMs in one folder, you can hit select game directory and then all your games will show up right here. So you don't have to go with file and load every time. Have a little thumbnail, icon of the game. Be easy to, to load up games anytime you want. Recent files, I use that fairly often. So those your 10 most recent files, pretty self or recent games that you've launched, pretty self-explanatory. So emulation, um, these options are grayed out. They're only available when the game is a game is running. We'll go to configure. So the generals tab. So most of this stuff can be left at default. I'll explain a few of these. Let's see the different languages. User system English performance enable CPU JIT. I forgot how long that's been now a year, year and a half, two years, something like that. Whenever they released this, it um, gave a significant speed boost to a lot of games. Most games got a big speed boost. A lot of games were able to finally run at full speed due to this. Um, but there are also tons of games, even with this, that didn't run at full speed. But with this new rendering option, I'll show you in a minute. Most games I've set out so far do run a full speed, so that's pretty sweet. So under emulation region, you can choose whatever region, auto select, do that as well if you'd like. 
Uh, it's got a default and dark theme. I've never really messed with dark. Let's get the default hotkeys. So you can adjust these. I just have them on default. I've never messed with them. If you want to set that up, you can. Under system, put whatever, whatever username's in here. I think by default it may say Citra. And then just put in random information for birth date if you like. And you can also choose the different uh, languages of the 3DS system. The language over here was just for, I think, the GUI, the graphic user interface. Um, just leave that on surround. I don't see any reason why not to. You can generate console IDs. I'm not exactly sure why you would need that unless for some uh, online feature, maybe. I'm not sure. It's just set zero times dead code, so it's not a legit code or anything, of course. So under input, um, it hasn't been too long ago where they did finally in the main Citra branches here implemented where you can use a gamepad and you can map it out here instead of using third party programs. However, I still prefer the third party programs because um, the main reason is whenever you set up, let's see, you got your circle pad. The diagonal sticks, or the diagonal, go, trying to go diagonally with it, it's still kind of funky. Um, if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever tried using a program that doesn't exactly support, I don't even know how to explain it exactly, but whenever you try to go, say, um, right and down, sometimes it'll just go right or sometimes it'll just go down. It won't go at your 45 degree angle you're trying to get. So, what I recommend is using a third party um, program, and I've tried out a few different ones. The one that I like the most is a free one, it doesn't have a trial that expires or anything, so you can use it for however long. Anti Micro, I'll include a link in the video description on where to get this. And you can just easily set up and save profiles. I've got the controller right now, moving the sticks around, D pad. And if you click right here on the stick, you can also set your dead zones because I'm using a wired Xbox 360 controller and the dead zones on these analog sticks can be pretty awful sometimes. They can, they can go way over. So if you don't set that up properly, then even when you're not using your uh, analog stick, sometimes your character will just move around on its own. So it's another reason I really like using a third party program like this. On here, the set analog, press, after pressing OK, first move your joystick horizontally, then vertically. So I think it tries to maybe, you know, set some um, dead zones maybe there. I'm not exactly sure how they configured it in Citra, but I still prefer this. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Graphics, very important settings here. Enable V-Sync will... Um, Eliminate screen tearing, I've noticed. When I don't have that enabled, if you don't know what screen tearing is, you can Google that, but it's basically where, I think it's where like the refresh rate of the game doesn't exactly match what's the screen and the GPU tries to display, and so sometimes there'll be these weird lines, maybe some little ghosting effect. So I like to enable that for sure. Limit speed percent. So, in almost all situations, you'll want to check this, set it at 100. Um, I've noticed for a few games in the past, if, say, if you have a game that's only running at, it's supposed to run at, say, it's supposed to run at 60 frames per second, you're only getting 54, <clears throat> 50, 40 something, you may want to come and just uncheck this. Um, for some reason, I've noticed it'll give you a few frames per second speed boost, but especially with this, these new settings here. A lot of games, if you have decent hardware, run way beyond 100%. So I like to, from my computer, enable that 100%. Backend OpenGL software. You'll want to do OpenGL. That'll make games run a lot better. That'll also allow you to render them in a higher resolution software. Um, I think it's a bit more accurate, but it's very slow. Uh, shader emulation. This is the new thing they just implemented two or three days ago. Well, yeah, two days ago on the, uh, March 10th. So today's the 12th. Um, before, it only did CPU. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I think it only do one core. And so games couldn't run as fast as they can now. Because now, by default, it's set to GPU. And I think NVIDIA GPUs have the best 
results in terms of speed boosts from this new shader emulation option. Um, we'll go back here. I'll show you a couple little stats that it has, a couple little graphs. They're pretty cool. There we go. So average performance increased for all titles by GPU vendor, as you can see here with NVIDIA around 100%. AMD, you're still gonna get around a 50% boost. So that's that's gonna help out a lot for you guys too. And Intel, your integrated graphics cards, still gonna give you 25% boost, approximately. So pretty sweet, pretty sweet. All right, um, I think they allowed the CPU um, option here as well in case there are some games that it may end up messing up. I haven't experienced that yet. I've only tried out a handful of games so far though. You can go back to CPU and it's just like the old setting um, and you can go that, that route if you need to. Internal resolution, you can set this to whatever. As long as you have a decent graphics card, I have not noticed any significant improvement or decrease in um, performance even on the 10 times native. I usually just set it to window size, which will, you know, have a 1080p monitor, so it'll it won't be exactly 1080p because it doesn't fill up the entire screen, but it'll look really good on whatever monitor uh, resolution you're running. Um, if you do want to try out these high resolutions, it will um, help to eliminate a lot of uh, leftover anti-aliasing. Even when you set it to your auto window size, it'll still be a little bit of aliasing around uh, textures. So it's not super noticeable, but if you compare your window size to the highest setting, you do notice it around the edges of some textures. Okay, accurate hardware shader and enable shader JIT. You'll want to enable both of these to have your best speed performance and to allow it to be in um, higher than native resolution graphics. So if you want to do it in HD, if you have a you know a decently high resolution monitor. Um, you'll definitely want to check these. I've uh, tried unchecking them to see if there's any kind of sp uh, speed difference. I've done this in the, in the past, and for some games, they didn't quite run at full speed for me. I'm unchecking some, uh, I think it's the Shader JIT. I can't remember offhand. It's one of these, it might give you one or two frame per second boost, so it's not really worth it to play in a resolution that looks like crap for you know one or two frames per second if your games aren't running at full speed. For screen layout, um, the default is just like on the 3DS, how you have your top and bottom screen, one right above the other. I like to set it to large screen myself. It'll put your uh, top screen filling up you know, a good chunk area about like where I'm outlining with the mouse. And the bottom screen will be in this little corner over here. You can, uh, some games are, you know, the main game plays on the bottom screen, so you can swap screens here as well if you'd like, and it'll put your uh, main bottom screen up here instead. All right, so audio tab, there's not really a whole lot you have to do to mess with this to change it around, um, or not really a, anything you have to do to change it around, there's nothing to, to, not too much to mess with, I just keep it on auto. You only have SDL2 or null, so you don't want null, it'll just have no audio at all. Audio stretching will help. Well, let me read it right here. This post processing effect adjusts audio speed to match emulation speed and helps prevent auto, audio stutter. This, however, increases audio latency. So it'll help the audio sound better without stuttering, crackling, messed up, but it could be slightly delayed or warped or a little messed up sounding. But in my opinion, it's quite better to have that enabled. Your audio device, I have a few different things here. Auto, most time will. Be just fine. It's whatever you use for your speakers. So debug, you can. Uh, let's see. I've never even messed with debug. But you don't have to mess with it. Web, um, you can use this option to share. Um, I'm trying to remember. I remember when they first announced this. I've never used it. Um, but right here, it says Citrix can collect additional data usage um, which can help them identify what games people are playing the most which ones they should work on and it may even send like I think it sends log files to them so they can see what issues are popping up in everyone's log files so <clears throat> that helps the team out if the, the developer team if you want to 
opt in and do this. You don't have to though. You can uncheck this if you want. I never really messed with it, but I think it's sending some basic information to them right now. But let's see, that is it for emulation screen. View full screen is fairly new. Um, F11 is the hotkey for that. It still doesn't take up quite the full screen. It, it just has your black borders around the whole thing, so you don't have to uh, um, see any kind of weird colors or borders or anything that don't blend in well with it. Um, single window mode, that'll uh, just keep it all within this one Citra window. If you uncheck it, it'll open up, pop open a new Citra window whenever you launch a game. Screen layout, we already looked at that. It's just a little shortcut way to get to it. Display, dock widget headers. Um, I don't even know what that does, to be honest. I've never messed with these. You don't need it. So the filter bar you can see at the bottom, if you have a ton of games, you can uh, search for them right here and filter them out. And status bar, I think that'll give you some basic FPS information when you're playing the game. Debugging, I'll never mess with that. You can try some of these out if you want, but you don't really have to do anything with that. Uh, multiplayer. So this is a fairly new option as well. I've never tried it out. I might do a video on it one of these days, but if you hit Browse Public Game Lobby, boom, you've got all these people. Let me see, here you can stretch it out. It tells you how many players, it's different uh, preferred games, who's hosting it. You can play online games with people on here. Um, believe it, it does not, well not I believe, I'm almost certain for positive. It doesn't use any kind of Nintendo servers or anything. It just uses, um, third party servers and maybe Citra or whoever's hosting it may just uh, use their own computer as the server, I'm not exactly sure, but it doesn't use any Nintendo ID or anything like that. Um, so yeah, some of these rooms have a few people in it, so I'm not exactly sure how the Pokemon Ultra Sun works, maybe that's just for trading Pokemon, but imagine some games... Let's see, I thought I saw Super Smash. Yeah, you got Super Smash Brothers. You could probably play multiplayer with that. That'd be kind of cool. Um, you can create your own rooms, direct room, or direct connect to room. So if you already have the information and say your buddies want to play with you, boom, into that in. You guys connect up and play each other. And about, it'll just tell you the uh, information about the uh, emulator, you can go to the website, forum, all that good stuff. And that's basically it. Um, I can show you real quick. You can just do the original because they fixed the um, no outline issue that the game was having. Let's see, I'm going to turn that down. That might create a uh, weird effect. Weird echo effect. Okay, so if I click there, before when I was um, in these outside areas, the frames per second was awful. Um, now, as you can see, 60. I think before I can't remember when it, this game was first when it first came out, it was 30 or 40 something. I think it's 40 something on my computer, maybe low to mid 40 frame per second. Now it's 60. I think I closed out of my anti micro, so if I want to move around, I gotta use the keyboard. But yeah, that's basically it. Thanks guys for watching. If you have questions, uh, leave a comment. I'll try to get to them or maybe someone else can answer for you. Um, I do not provide links to any ROMs. You're on your own for dumping them, finding them, whatever way you want to use to, to play them. But we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.